uh, on the issue of restructuring. We have Professor Anthony Keeler, public affairs commentator, joining us uh, on the other half of the show. Thank you very much for coming through. Thank you very much, Professor. Nice to see you. So the conversation is on. As a matter of fact, it's been on for uh, quite a long time now as we get the need to restructure Nigeria. But yes. let's uh, take, for instance, the reaction of the presidency, the current administration as regards this. Sometimes, I think it was a first day of the year, uh, Mr. President addressed the nation and he was of the opinion that what we need right now isn't really restructuring uh, as much as, um, you know, he made mention of the system of government that at some point we were running a parliamentary before we, you know, turned to presidential uh, uh, system and that it would take a while for this kind of government to evolve. What are your thoughts as regards that? Well, my thinking is that overall, the presidency is not in tune with the nation as regards the structuring. You know, if we want to say this thing, it is good to be clear about it. One must understand that the presidency is not in tune with the nation regarding restructuring. The other thought is that there's a lot of people talking about restructuring. Some are ignorant, some are mischievous, and some are outrightly fraudulent when it comes to restructuring. It is not as complex as people are making it. Although in Nigeria, some people have become experts of making the simple difficult for the purpose of obtaining nothing. It's not as difficult as people make it matter of restructuring. The idea of restructuring is about devolving power from the center to regions and states through federalism. The country Nigeria is called a federal republic, but we do not practice federalism at all. Federalism for students of politics and institutions and history is a very clear thing. It's not vague. It's not something you manage. It is very clear. It is about federating parts coming together in which majority of the role are held by federal parts. And the center deals with what federating units cannot deal with. We have a peculiarity here, we like to think of peculiarity, which is because majority of our revenues come from oil. Mm. And it will appear that is what binds us more than our flag, our name, or anything. But you say, but this is a problem for the elites. This is a problem for people sharing cakes. Mm. For the, what I call the normal Nigerian, you will call it the average Nigerian, what matters is to get things done. A lot is being done with technology, that needs to be said. There was a time in which for you to do anything, you had to wait for Abuja to sign it. With technology, we're going past that. Some of us are extremists of restructuring and federalism. I would rather my local government be more important to me than the state government, as a matter of fact. You see, some of us, if we had our way, we would turn around the way of governance in which the nearest organ of government to you should be the most powerful. That is the whole point. We have issues we need to look at. I personally, if we're talking restructuring, I'll ask for two things. Number one is that restructuring shouldn't be seen as a way of punishing one part of the country against the other. There are some mischievous people and the fraudulent ones who, behind restructuring, what they want to do is to punish one part of the country. Mm. We don't need to do that. Restructuring should be fair, functional, and flexible. Flexible enough to deal with circumstances of the future. Functional enough to be able to deal with circumstances of the present. Mm. We look at what we need to do and we do it. It has to be fair in the sense that everybody should feel at home with it. No state should be so poor that due to restructuring, they go to extinction. Mm -hmm. No state should be so rich that due to restructuring, they move on without others. Mm -hmm. We have some other peculiarities that we need to look at into restructuring. A place like Lagos, for example, I keep saying it, needs to be given a special status because of the amount of revenue it generates, because of the amount of boarding of Nigeria it creates. Look at the ports. Look at lots of businesses. Those kind of things to be recognized. You see, and the best way to do it is to go into a kind of social contract, a la John Rose, in which 
Without looking at the benefit of what will happen immediately, we need to find people who are real nation builders who can blindfold themselves yeah. and to make a constitution, a law, that is not made ad hoc for the benefit of one part against the other. That is where I stand on it, when you ask me on my thoughts. Mm. All right. Now, the, 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 con the issue of the state of status, uh, special status for Lagos, yes. is, is another discourse altogether where people see from different perspectives, where if you give a special status to Lagos, yes. the Constitution doesn't recognize special status for any state than any other one. How yes. do you recognize states in that regard? There are others who are saying, what makes Lagos so complex and so... Even the, you mentioned the ports. Yes. Some are saying, take away the ports. Not everyone should, shouldn't come to Lagos for yes. the same thing. Take yes. away the ports, you know, decentralize it, go to Aquabom, go to yeah, Cross River, go to Cross, uh, uh, Delta, and all of that. Yes. If they do that, yes. and all of that, will, will, will the state, special status still be there for Lagos? And, and in, in, in doing that, how would you refer to Lagos? Kano State is the same thing. If you're um, asking for special status for Lagos, you might be asking the same thing for, for Kano State too because they, 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 they are side by side, even though uh, Lagos may have an edge because of the location and because of uh, exposure. Well, that's the whole point of the Constitution. Mm. That is, the Constitution is agreed. You see, we have a jaundiced situation in Nigeria because our Constitution was not agreed. It was given to us by the military. Where there is the possibility of people coming together to decide their bond, to decide how to live together, you make a case for a particular clause, comma, law. People will argue for it, people will argue against it, you know. Thesis, antithesis, and sentences yeah. of the situation. They'll make the case, you know. If the whole lawmakers, if the federating assemblymen think that there's enough case, to give Lagos and another state status. It's not that Lagos get it, other people shouldn't get it. Who cares? Mm. The important is that it is required because of the peculiarity of the place. Mm. And That's it right. is not new. It happens elsewhere in the world. You know, you make a case for it as you go ahead. It's as simple as that. Right. Public affairs analyst Dr. Osin Uweze uh, joins us now to uh, contribute his own quota to this outgoing discussion. Thank you for making it this morning. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mwesi. Yeah, thank uh, you to see you here. Yeah. Let's look at um, President Mohamed Buhari's position on restructuring. I'm going to quote him there from his um, New Year's speech earlier in the year. He says, we Nigerians can be very impatient and want to improve our conditions faster than may be possible considering our resources and capabilities. He goes ahead to say, when all the aggregates of nationwide opinions are considered, my firm view is that our problems are more to do with process than structure. You're an academic. Help us understand that, uh, between there, process and structure. Yeah, because uh, um, you know, it's, uh, structure is a building block. Uh, and uh, process, the two go together. If you must, uh, the, the structure determines the process. You know, if you don't have a good structure, you know, the process will also be faulty. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, there is no process without structure. You know, you can have a structure without process, but they can't have a, a process without structure. Mm -hmm. So the major thing, the crux of the matter is we don't have a structure. The, f the structure that Nigerian state is resting on is faulty, is weak, is tilted and can collapse yeah. any moment. Nigeria is in a precipice. And in, in, based on that uh, quote, the, uh, the president's uh, comment, we are in a knowledge economy, okay? Mm -hmm. If you check out the, uh, what is going on in your environment, mm -hmm. everything, speed, one of the characteristics of the knowledge economy is speed. speed. Swiftness. So you cannot afford, we cannot afford to be in the, you know, in the, in the 50s. Okay, we are, and that's why if you see young people, they're impatient, they're, they're in a hurry. You know, the whole society, the whole world is in a hurry yeah. because we have a target and no, the whole world cannot stand still for you. Uh, and, and my study in a presidential character, you know, shows that for any president to succeed, one of the things you have to consider is the, the president's uh, worldview. Yeah. Yeah. So the worldview now is all about speed. How fast can we get things done? 
You know, it's, you see children being born today, they are seeing today. Yeah. In the past, when I was born, it took me uh, weeks before I could see. <laughs> In fact, they celebrate it differently. Yes. Oh, the baby has opened his eyes. So, so we, we are, you shouldn't say that we should so slow down. Mm. The world we will should, overtake we we Exactly. Speed is of essence. In, especially when Nigerians are very mobile people. Yeah. You travel to exactly. South Africa, you travel to Japan, you, you see go to Dubai. Thing. You, see you go thing. to Dubai, you go to... <laughs> Everything. And then when you come back home, it hits you hard. Yeah. How right. someone used the word crude, our economy still is, from the airport to, to the roads to light to everything. Nothing just works. You travel to Johannesburg, for instance, you enjoy life. That is that from is, from from one point of yeah. the country to another. Maybe when you travel to the side to the side like Soweto, maybe you might see okay, there's some rural nature of things. But you come back. Mm -hmm. But when you come back to Nigeria, it's total. It's, it's like two hundred years behind. Behind. But let, let me let me still ask you this. No, no, no. But there was a comment you may I would like to just okay, chip okay. in there All right. about uh, this restructuring. Yes. And uh, you know the, the case of. Uh, the ports and, and, and all that. Mm. You know, they, what is happening at Papa Port today didn't start today. It started right from 1970. Mm. Yeah. You know? So it's accumulation of all this, the policies and all that, everything, Lagos, Lagos. Now we're seeing it. The, 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 the effect of it. Yeah, yes. the effect of it. There's a deep sea, natural deep sea in Akwai Bomb. Mm. Use it. But there's a consultant to that. I think they have, they have prepared a document and all that on how Akwai Bomb, by opening up that deep sea, could also affect the whole entire economy of the country. Mm -hmm. A railway is, is being proposed from port and have these dry ports in all the places up to Casina. Mm -hmm. So that, you know, wherever you want. Exactly. It to, it's a whole economy. Using you the don't coastal, have to come from Medjugorje all, all the way to. Mm -hmm. The coastal economy is what we need to able to, you know, to grow Nigeria's economy, mm -hmm. you know. And, 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 then, and then, uh, a lot of people are gathering and putting things together, come on, you know, how to restructure. Yeah. You, you have to go with the flow. On the 19th of November, a group were all putting together uh, a restructuring uh, a summit mm -hmm. where the likes of Walesho and Kai will come and speak and um, about this restructuring issue. Uh, 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 the former Nigerian Gambari also speaking. Okay. You can watch Gamb also. Professor Sulu Gambari. Yeah, yeah. yes. You know, they are speaking on the night. Everybody is, the president cannot stand alone. Mm. He stands alone in the case of corruption. He cannot afford to stand alone. Like even, on corruption. Yes. even on corruption, he can't stand he can, alone. He, you know, he's standing <laughs> um, alone right Dr. now. Wazi, you, he made a very good point about the world view. You see, the problem we have here is twofold. One is that you're dealing with a digital age with an analog mentality. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. The people you're dealing with today they are even not even them. Their parents started drinking instant coffee. They started with Polaroid camera. That is the day the world changed. Polaroid camera. Things have become instant. People don't wait. There was a time in the world. Some people cannot even remember it. You went to take photographs and you had to go back the next day. Yes. Yeah, to I take remember. it. Even two days. <laughs> it would be absurd for anybody to tell you that today now. Because the whole thing is digital. Now. And if you want to deal with this one, well, you need to understand it. You see, the other thing is this. We've wasted close to 58 years of our life as a country. Instead of understanding who we are and building around that, we've tried to forge us into something else. We spent so many years playing identity politics, forcing people to be Nigerians. We invented silly words like detribalized, mm. a very horrible word, a very horrible expression to describe people. It is nonsense. I do not need to be detribalized. I need to be fair. Yes. What matters to me is you can come from wherever you are. We need to understand that this country is a combination, is an agglomeration of different nations. Mm. And we need to find a way to work together. That is why they invented a federal character for those who care about representation. Mm. Ideally, we should be able to live wherever we want to because we're guaranteed by the law. Mm. The same way in which somebody can come from abroad and live in Nigeria. Mm because they're guaranteed by the law, a Lagosian should be able to live anywhere in Nigeria and guaranteed by the law. What we have done is that we've built a very awkward situation in which we're forcing people into be what they're not by nature, yeah. forcing them to be Nigerians. Yeah. And the consequence of that is that when you travel, you were talking about travel, when traveling to a Nigerian international airport, you know what you see, which happens only in Nigeria and the world, yeah. the queue for foreigners is very light 
and quick. Mm. The ones for Nigerians is very long and slow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you're turning back, <laughs> when you're turning back, when you're you're traveling. Traveling. exactly. When you're traveling and when you're coming, you're coming back, back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, you're, you're going to ask uh, your question. Exactly. And, 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 and you keep looking at these things to, to realize that somebody's not getting something right about mm. this. Exactly. Country. That is just even about traveling. The, the, in every other aspect of life, you still find these things. But, uh, Dr. Moise, let me come to you on this. In 1963, where we became a republic, yeah. It, it seemed like a major restructuring also because it was about the citizenship, you know, it was about returning things from London, bring it back to home, let us all be, you know, and all of that. In 1979, there was also a restructuring when we said, okay, we finished with parliamentary system, the military came, now we're going into presidential system. And it was a whole new kind of government, new kind of system and all of that. In 1999, it was another kind of... In all of those instances, there weren't agitations of where you come from, what the suspicions are, and all of that. But right now, people understand the restructuring we're talking about now, maybe from where you come from, from the region of the country you come from, or from who you are, or from who you serve, and all of that. What's different between this cough agitation that time and now? No, you see, um, Mike, you know, I, I, I just want to thank you for that, because... Um, Right from 1963, that election and all that, 63, yeah. 64, mm -hmm. and stuff, that was when our major problem started. The North, as a group, wanted out. Mm -hmm. uh, Zeke and other, uh, Awolo and all that, didn't want that, especially Zeke. Mm -hmm. He wanted a one Nigeria. It's okay, the North said, okay, we can negotiate if you want us to remain. Give us two thirds of your parliament. And that was the biggest mistake they made. And that's why today there is no way you will win an election or the North can try to perpetuate themselves. If they want, they can perpetuate themselves in power forever, for as long as we go through this uh, route, political uh, route. In 1979, you see, because the, all this was 1979 and up to today. It's not about it's not about trial and error, but about us having a homegrown thing that we can call our own. In the in those days in the village, even up to now, when you want to select leaders, I believe uh, well I cannot say for now, uh, uh, but in the past, there's a process that people in your village, Mike, and you know, and also my village, we select our own leaders to represent us. That was where we should have brought, you know brought that, escalated to the uh, political level, to be able to select our own, based on our own heritage. Yeah. In all of this, there's absence of our own heritage, our culture, the way we do our own things, is absent in all of this. Wow. The present system that we run is all about trial and error. It has never grown any economy. We are running before we walk. That's exactly what it, it means. There is a certain level of uh, educational level, literacy level, that you require to okay. run a democracy. It's sophisticated. Yeah. There's also a certain level of education you require to develop your economy. Mm. Not less than 75, 80% to really grow your economy. Mm. So right now, we are 40 something percent. Mm. There's no way we understand what democracy is all about. That's why you have all this mess. There's so much poverty, both physical um, poverty of the stomach and of the mind. <laughs> and there's also illiteracy. And you have a sophisticated system called democracy. They can never meet. They can never meet. Poverty, illiteracy, and democracy, liberal democracy that we pretend to run, there's no way they can meet. There's no meeting point. We should humble ourselves. Crash this system. It cannot work. We're still we're deceiving ourselves. Come up with a homegrown system. You know, maybe form an interim government yeah. or something. Wow. It's part of the restructuring. <laughs> yes. Well, but that's if a fear. Want, well, yeah. that's a fear. Because when you use it, or crush the system, maybe we can have an interim. That's the, that's the fear, actually. Why How do you fear? crush? If How you love you this, the, Professor Killer mm. made a point mm. that if you actually nation builders, you know, nation builders sacrifice themselves mm. for the sake of the nation, mm. you put, out, put aside your selfish mm. interests, put aside your, your group interests, I think Put aside your regional interests and build up a nation. We are not a nation. Mm.
for us to be a nation, every selfish regional group interest will be put aside for the bigger picture right. of Nigeria. Otherwise, you know, sometimes I, be, I, be, I wonder, all this crop of leaders we have, do they even think that when they die, they don't have children? They don't consider what kind of nation they will have to build for their children to grow up in. Right. I think That's what every great leader you think, thinks about. I think, I think part of the problem, part of the misfortune of Nigeria is that we have mixed politics with governance throughout. I mean, politics is legitimate. You know, partisan politics is a, is a legitimate thing. It's, um, for people to aspire for power and to get more and more power mm. is a natural phenomenon of democracy. But most people are lucky. Some other nations in the world are lucky because they have a moment of building the nation, mm. then later to go and share it. You know, okay. it's like, let me find a metaphor. A family gets together and builds a very big house. Then you fight over the room. Mm. We have not built the house. We've been fighting over the blocks to build it. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is where we are. As yeah. You see, we need that fortune of nation builders. If I, I wouldn't be as radical as our, as our Dr. Hebb. If what we need is a group of people who will agree to do our constitution and then agree that after this constitution, anybody that is part of that formation will not run for office. Hmm. That is exactly the point. Just as simple as that. Just have get an together. Interim, interim thing. No, no. Do a constitution. Not even the government. Let the government keep running. I mean, the government is a daily thing. It's ambitious people who say, like me, like me, hmm. let me run for eight years. They they, you can't expect greatness from politicians. I, I'm of that view. I don't... When I look at politicians, I never expect greatness from them. Because if you understand the mindset of people running for office, you'll be surprised what they do. And you talk about the profile of presidents. You know, yeah. if you can understand the mindset of people putting out themselves for office, you wouldn't expect anything from them. What we should be looking should, at... Should that, should that be peculiar to Nigeria? No, no, or, all or, over the world. All over the all world. Over the, world. Okay. The, the reason why you have exceptional statesmen, well, you call them exceptional because they're exceptional, mm. because in most cases they're not. If you look at a culture as old as the UK, how many leaders do you talk about? You talk about Churchill. Outside that, how many prime ministers do they have? Yeah. Who comes to mind? If you look at the United States of America, you talk about a few presidents. Yeah. You know how many other presidents are there that nobody talks about? Because it is not, we expect too much from our leaders, as a matter of fact. You know, Prof, we seem to have some fantastic ideas. Yeah. And these ideas are not limited to this discourse. Yeah. Uh, they have evolved over time uh, yeah. within the context of restructuring. Yeah. We'll mention resource control, derivation principle, fiscal federalism, citizenship, you know, state police, and the list is endless. Yeah. My concern, however, is how do we achieve this dream? within the confines of our constitution. Uh, the fact is that there's limits we can do without the National Assembly. Just last year, a constitutional amendment was ongoing. I one would have thought that um, we can take advantage of that to effect these changes. I, I have a solution. This is my solution. Citizens, as from today, watching us today and sharing this information, should find a common voice and say that the person I'm going to vote for, come 2019, must agree that they would find a way to touch the Constitution. Either they adopt what is existing, or they set up something new to say, this is the new Nigeria we want. Yeah. If we can find that common voice as citizens, regardless of our affiliation, ethnical, partisan, or religious affiliation, mm -hmm. if we can say, Selfishly, because you see, the, part of the problem we have is that politicians are very organized. It is the citizens that are not organized. Mm. You see them walking seriously towards their elections. You want to know how bad politicians are? The most neglected street in Nigeria has political posters. Mm. They remember mm -hmm. to take their posters there, but they don't remember to go and do the roads. So it is time that citizens should find a common voice and say, okay, you know what? We're going to take control. Instead of waiting for politicians, to make promises. Nigerians need a group of people who will come together and set the agenda for politicians. So far, and you see, I speak badly of politicians, but you know what? Nigerian politicians are actually the best in the world. Because they, wow. yes, yes. <laughs> that is a strong statement to I, make And I stand morning. by it, it's, just, it's <laughs> factual. You see, because elsewhere, ordinary people make politicians. In Nigeria, politicians make themselves. They invest their money, they invest their connection, their time, 
and they get into office. They even pay voters <laughs> to get into office. <laughs> so after all that investment, really and truly... The, the state suffers for it. Exactly. The state so suffers for it. Yes, because the state see, has to pay. Yeah. But you see what we need to look at? It? After such investment, if they make a kilometer of road, it is out of their beneficence that they've done it. Uh, uh, <laughs> wow. And it's just because they're good people. Yeah, okay. Because they took themselves that, there. That, that is a perspective a we lot of Nigerians... Need, as a people, we need to employ people yeah. to work for us. That, that, that is a perspective a lot of Nigerians may not necessarily agree. But it's okay. It's, it's still part of the, the, part of the discourse. Uh, Dr. Nwese, let me come to you on this. Now, the question of who, whose table does it lie to restructure this country is on as to based on the constitution who has the power to restructure nigeria if, for instance we all agree now we have agreed to do to restructure nigeria who is the person to do that from from everything it shows that the president doesn't even have the power to restructure nigeria no you see not that the, the, president, the president doesn't have power mm. what i think that when this president came to power my thought was based on his uh, antecedent and pedigree mm. that it would be a concept of this tragic hero, the tra tra tragic hero All concept right. I always preach, <laughs> that he came in through the wrong process. Mm. He could decide to sacrifice himself. Yeah. Right. What sociologists call the uh, uh, class suicide. Yes. He could commit that suicide and build Nigeria and tell the National Assembly, this is what I want, this, this is my vision. Right. But there's no vision of Nigeria. There's only vision of self. There's only vision of my, my village, or my, my, my region, clan. my clan, my <laughs> tribe, my ethnic group, and all that. That's the only vision we have. You say, Doctor, we need someone that has a national vision, a picture of what we want, mm. you know? And then we begin to invest in education. Education is the way out, to, you know, for us. I totally agree with you. But this Not is corruption. Mm -hmm. Corruption is a symptom of the major problem. The root yeah, cause yeah, of our... Yeah, that's, that's is true. education. Once we have yeah, that, but, but do you think we build... Yeah, the, yeah, president, yeah, the president can be the champion. Yeah, but Dr. Mwese, do you think that one single president yeah. can carry out proper restructuring? Yes. Yes, one single president can commit that political suicide okay. and yeah. then set up a, 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 you know, a system that could bring, have a good succession plan. Right. Because government is a continuum. Hmm. So when one government goes, the other person follows from where? Builds on it. Builds on it. Modifies because there's a it. vision everybody believes in. Okay. There's a vision. Everybody has a buy-in. OK. We'll certainly be, before the end of the program, we might even look at the consequences, see if there are any consequences as to issue of uh, restructuring. <laughs> There definitely there are consequences, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because somebody has to make sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, all about Nigerians need to make sacrifice.